Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, lesson going into this article uh, that was written uh, by a particular Christian theologian uh, by the name of Derek D. Mars. All right, this article was sent to me by the beloved uh, brother Require Quam out of London. And uh, I wanted to go into it. I was just watching um, the elder apostle Ramlab's latest video and he brought it up. Uh, so this is the video he was speaking on uh, dealing with uh, Vocab Malone's elder John Calvin, you know, pretty much supporting and understanding what we know and understand and believe about the Holy Scriptures as pertaining to the New Testament. All right. These particular letters that were written by Paul, Peter, James. All right. Um, to these particular churches that were being raised up. All right. Are written to Israelites who were scattered amongst these nations who had lost. All right. Their way. And pretty much are returning back to the Heavenly Father. Remember, it was the Israelites who broke the first covenant and sinned who needed to be redeemed back to the Father. And that's what the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh is for. As it tells you in the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, okay, around the 29th verse, the Lord of our fathers raised up Hamashiach Yahweh who was slew and hanged, all right, on the tree, him hath the heavenly father exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for forgive to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. It is the Israelites. All right. Who broke that covenant and needed to be redeemed back. All right. Through the blood of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, we are redeemed back. All right. And we are under a grace period now. All right. In preparation to be entered into the second covenant. All right, which is still a covenant to the Israelites, but it's based upon better promises. All right, and the mediator and high priest of this covenant is not Aaron. Okay, the laws will be written in our inward parts through Yahweh Shai. All right, that's the high priest of this new covenant, and it's only for the Israelites. And this is what we've been telling you. Now, within this uh, article, as you can see, the title of it is, Was First Peter Written to Jews or Gentiles? Why the Answer Matters More Than You Think. All right, and this was written by this guy, all right, Derek DeMar, so you can know who he is. You can pause it and read all of this, but he's a uh, master of theology. He went to a seminary school, you know. Uh, he's a seminary grad, writer, husband, self-proclaimed armchair theologian. All right, so ultimately he's a he's a Christian and he's out here close to us in Rockwall, Texas. All right, so maybe he can come to the camp and uh, you know cut vocab Malone with uh, his findings here as well. All right, now when you read these letters in the New Testament, all right, the first thing we must understand is that all of them are written to the same audience. All right. They're written to the Israelites. All right. Some things within these letters address those of the circumcision, the ones who were raised in the customs, who knew and understood who they were. All right. And some were addressing those of the uncircumcision. All right. The descendants of those Israelites from the Greek captivity into the Roman captivity. All right. Who weren't raised as Israelites. All right. Wild olive tree, uncultivated. All right. And the olive is still an olive. OK, no orange can be grafted in. All right. No juniper berry can be grafted into that tree. It's an olive tree and you have different kinds of olives, just like you have different tribes, 12 tribes. As the promise was told unto Jacob, a nation and a company of nations shall come of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins. And what the Christian wants to do. All right. For the most part is. You know, cut off the seed line of Abraham, Isaac through Jacob. OK, and take Abraham unto themselves 
and enter in and replace the original seed and enter in all of these various different nations into a covenant and agreement that was never made with them. You see, that's like me going to one of the Rothschilds, okay, and teaching a doctrine that we can enter into their inheritance. We can enter into what they have. No, it wouldn't work. Now, when you read this, this is 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shahamashiach, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no div divisions among you, and that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, how bugged out would it be if this is the, the order, okay, but then you have one book, like the book of James, all right? This is always a great example. We use the book of James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So here it is. You have one pillar of the church, which James was of the circumcision. This is the brother, the biological brother of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right. Jude is his brother. He also had sisters. That's all throughout the scriptures. And Mary herself referred to Joseph as his father in the book of Luke. He was Joseph was referred to as the father in many of the uh, books. All right. But right here we see that James. All right. One of the 12 is writing a letter. And who's the letter to? To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. All right. Now, when you look up this term scattered. OK, you have this term diaspora all right diaspora diaspora and what does it mean a scattering dispersion of israelites dispersed among foreign nations all right it says of the christians all right of the followers of yahweh scattered abroad the gentiles all right as these israelites who were scattered among these heathen nations learned their works they became gentiles but through Yahweh Shai and the preaching of Yahweh Shai, they were brought back, covered under that blood. All right. Which with this this scattering is a result of a curse. OK, of a curse that came with. All right. The Israelites breaking. The first covenant, Deuteronomy 28 and 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other and there shall thou serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone and among these nations thou shalt find no ease among and that's a broad all right uh, uh that's that's a focus of the scriptures the israelites among these particular nations as a matter of fact real quick in the book of acts the uh 15th chapter when you had this council at Jerusalem, all right, because the circumcision kept bothering these Israelites, all right, who were coming out of this Gentile state, telling them they had to be circumcised after the manner of Moses, all right, which circumcision is a beautiful thing, but they were saying in, in order for you to be saved, in order for the Lord to deal with you, you would have to be circumcised after the manner of Moses and keep all of the laws, which the Lord was already dealing with them. And Abraham himself, cuts them because he was uncircumcised when the heavenly father all right came to him and restored all things all right unto him for that chosen lineage all right so the the, the christians try to hijack abraham all right but the uncircumcision all right and abraham are linked all right because he had great faith while being in an uncircumcised state just as these israelites and just as us all right. We had great faith. Some of us may have had the physical circumcision of the penis, but we were uh, uh, lost. We were uncircumcised in our mind. OK, and through the preaching of the word, we're turning back. We're still of the family line of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We were just in a heathen like state. Now, right here. This is Acts 15 and 19. It says, wherefore, my sentence is that we troubled not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned unto God. So these Israelites who these letters are written to, okay, 
as we're getting ready to get into like uh, uh, first Peter's. All right. These letters are written to Israelites. So the question as we start this video is why would James write to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad? All right. But then Paul in the book of Galatians writes to actual heathen. Or Peter is writing to actual heathen. It doesn't make sense. All right. We know according to the Holy Scriptures, the Israelites will be scattered. All right. And that's the importance of understanding prophecy. Daniel, the seventh chapter, there's four beasts. You had the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. OK. You had the uh, the Persians and the Medes. Then you had the Greeks and you had the Romans. The Israelites would be scattered within these various captivities. As a matter of fact, real quick, let's get the book of Zechariah 1. Okay. Zechariah chapter 1. All right. In 18, it says, Then lifted up my eyes, and I saw, behold, four horns. Okay. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. So pretty much through these four beasts or four horns, power uh, rulerships, all right, the Israelites will be scattered, all right? And when you get to the fourth beast, that's the Roman Empire, but then there's a little horn that issues forth from it. And that's Babylon the Great, all right, America, the NATO, and the EU, the revival of Rome and through them we were scattered traded as well okay so you must line the New Testament up with what was prophesied in the old you can't just jump to Matthew and say well now I have an understanding of the Bible and, and, and this is the gospel so here in this uh, article all right was Peter was first Peter written to Jews or Gentiles why the answer might matter more than you think. And we're going to read some excerpts from it. All right. And but what we're going to see is that John Calvin, all right, the elder of Vocab Malone, agrees with what we teach, which is a cut to him as he's going around finding all of these books, you know, in the nooks and crannies and crevices trying to figure out why we're doing what we're doing. And you can't figure out what we're doing without going into prophecy we're doing what we're doing because of bible prophecy the israelites in the latter days would wake up that's point blank period prophecy the dry bones would awaken that's why we're doing what we're doing you can't carnally figure it out and if you want to get into books why don't you deal with the talmud that's a great book to get into scrutinize that book now it says the opening line of first Peter identifies it as a letter from Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, which when you get the book of Galatians, the second chapter, we find out Peter was an apostle to the circumcision. Paul was an apostle to the uncircumcision, along with Barnabas. All right, to go teach these Israelites who were scattered among these nations. Okay? So the opening line of First Peter identifies it as a letter from Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, to those chosen living as exile, exiles dispersed abroad, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. All right? Now, let's read that. All right? One of Apostle Recall's favorite uh, scriptures. Okay, first Peter is one and one. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, which Galatia is where the book of Galatians was written to. There was a church in Galatia. And see, vocab and these Christians love to jump to the book of Galatians and nitpick particular scriptures that can make it seem like. All right. The promise is null and void for everybody. And now through uh, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob no longer matters, but through Abraham, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and the second covenant is for you. No, these are Israelites in these particular regions to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia elect elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Now, who's the elect? I always bring this out, but why not bring it out again? 
Okay. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, in Israel, mine elect. Okay. I have called thee by name. I have surnamed thee, even though thou hast not known me. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 41 and 8. Isaiah 41 and 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant. Jacob, who whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So the seed of Abraham has to go through Isaac and Jacob. That's the seed that's accounted for the promise, in particular the elect, all right, the remnant that are going to be heirs to the promise of that land. Okay, so through Abraham, that chosen seed is going to be restored to that land, all right, through Isaac and Jacob. All right, because remember, at the time of Adam, we, we've been kicked out of that garden. And that's where uh, Solomon ruled out of. And that's where the second Adam, Hamashiach, is going to rule out of, starting at Jerusalem, the promised land. So this is why we're awakening, you brothers and sisters that are listening, to be heirs to the promise that was given unto our father Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. And we know that we're Israelites through the spirit because we're doing exactly what the scripture said we would be doing. Okay, so it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit of obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And who was that blood sprinkled for? We read it earlier, but let's get it. Let's get it so that you can see it yourself. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And this is what we're doing. We're no longer leaning upon you Edomites for the understanding of the Bible. And this is what hurts you. You're so used to controlling what we believe, what we think, what we say. Well, now we, we're, we're obeying the Most High through Yahweh Shai rather than men. And through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the true men of the Lord have been raised up. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. All right? Speaking to the circumcision. They were, they, they were a big part. All right. Those who didn't want to follow him, a big part of getting him offered up. But it was all prophecy. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. OK, the first covenant, the blood sprinkled was for the Israelites. The second covenant, the blood sprinkled through Yahweh Shai is for the Israelites. We are the ones who sinned under that first covenant. So when you read this. In another uh, translation, okay, the, all of the translations agree with what we say. King, New King James, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia. So the thing is, is Peter just writing to the dispersed amongst these nations? Is James just writing to the dispersed amongst these nations? And then Paul comes and writes. All right, to, to, to the actual heathen who the, the dispersed are scattered amongst? No, they're all writing to the same people. They're all speaking the same thing. NLT, this letter is from Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Just like Abraham was a foreigner in Ur of the Chaldees but was awakened to his true heritage through the spirit. And what did he do? He started marching towards the promised land. That's what we're doing. We're exiles scattered in here in America, in various different places. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, to God's elect exiles scattered throughout provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Exiles. Because we are the seed, all right, who our fathers broke that covenant. So we're scattered and these Gentiles were scattered due to a punishment that came with broken or breaking that first covenant. Okay. Hebrews 9. One second here. Hebrews 9. In 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament, a new covenant, 
that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who transgress under the first testament and need to be redeemed? That they which are called might receive the promises of eternal inheritance. And what's the inheritance? The land that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get Galatians, the fourth chapter. Since you love Galatians, let's go to Galatians. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. All right. Which Yahweh Shai was made under the law through his mother Mary, which received seed. The only way for Yahweh Shah to be perfect according to the law is that he was the seed of a man. How about that? If he wasn't the seed of a man, he's not perfect according to the law. Anyway, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So to redeem them that were under the law. Who was under the law? Who was under that first covenant? Israelites. That we might receive the adoption of of sons the sons of god all right who had constantly fell who went to see us adoption as sons the relationship which god was pleased to establish between himself and the israelites in preference to all other nations so we are the ones being redeemed back to the father through yahweh because we sinned under that first covenant okay our fathers all right, which is why Paul, let's see here, here in 1 Corinthians 10, as Paul is writing to the church of Corinth, listen to what he says. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that our fathers were under a cloud and all passed through the sea. Our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Our fathers, who, who was under the cloud and passed through the sea? Israelites ex being exodus out of Egypt and were all baptized unto Moses and in the, and, and the sea and all did eat of the same spiritual meat and drink of the same spiritual uh, drink, but they drank of that spiritual rock and that rock that followed them was Hamashiach. That angel in the wilderness was Yahweh Shai. For those who have ears to hear, there was an angel that followed the Israelites in the wilderness. All right. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So your fathers, our fathers are Israelites who were under that cloud. That doesn't apply to all nations. All right. Even though there was a multitude that even came out with the Israelites in Egypt, they weren't under that covenant. Under that covenant, all right, there were particular laws on how to deal with servants of heathen, all right, but they are not under the covenant. That blood, they're not covered under that blood, all right? So going back to this article, all right, speaking on 1 Peter 1, all right, let's read it again. The opening line of Peter identifies it as a letter from Peter an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to those chosen living as exiles dispersed abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. At first blush, the wording suggests that Peter is addressing ethnically Jewish followers of Jesus. All right. They were Israelites. All right. Particularly of the seed of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, because you had... Uh, uh, that was primarily who was there, all right, because the, the other tribes had already came to the other side of the world, but that's another lesson for another time. And you had some of the uh, northern kingdom as well, all right, but to the circumcision, these Israelites who were awakening were looked at as the uncircumcision, common, unclean, Levitically, all right, inept. <laughs> they, 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 they looked down upon them, Okay. And that was the whole argument. That's why when you read the book of Galatians, all right, Paul is, 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 is cursing out the church because they were getting under that mindset that they can be justified by the law. And who was under that first covenant? How could actual heathen be justified by the first covenant when it was never for them? As the apostle uh, brought out, he showed this word unto Israel and no other nation. That's in the book of Psalms 147. 
He showed this word unto Jacob, his statutes and his covenants and laws unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any other nation. So how could the book of Galatians be speaking to actual heathen tried to be justified by the first covenant when the first covenant was only for the Israelites? Anyway, it says he calls them chosen. All right. And we're going to get to Calvin. It says Israel was God's chosen nation in the Old Testament and in the New. He referred to them as exiles. All right. The Jewish, which we don't fall under the, the term Jewish. OK, we're not Jewish. OK, and Jew is either Judah is short for Judah or it can represent Judah, Benjamin and Levi, the southern kingdom. Who were primarily on the scene when Hamashiach came. All right. The Jewish people had been exiled from their homeland by the Babylonians in 586 BCE, which we, we showed you in the book of Daniel. These four beasts. All right. In Daniel, the seventh chapter are primarily where the Israelites will be scattered, the Assyrian Babylonian, the Persians and the Medes, the Greeks, which you can get that history in the Maccabees and the Romans, which you read that history in the New Testament. Then. There will be a, a scattering amongst Babylon the Great, all right, as well as throughout the four corners of the earth. You can't separate prophecy from the New Testament, okay? Anyway, it says they have been exiled from their homeland by the Babylonians. And, and when he says they are dispersed abroad, the Greek term he uses is diaspora, a term used referring to the scattering of of the jews all right which we get the the phrase diaspora and that's who he's writing to okay he, he the, the peter and apostle of yahweh shai to the strangers scattered to the strangers scattered <laughs> all right throughout pontus galatia cappadocia and asia and when you look up that term scattered okay for some reason it's not loading but it's diaspora. We read that in the book of James. Peter uses the same word. Okay. Scattered throughout. Diaspora is what? The Israelites dispersed among foreign nations or the followers of Yahawashai Yeh scattered among the nations who were turning from those idols. Let's go back. And yet there are some verses in 1 Peter that seem to suggest the letter was intended to non-Jewish Christians. No. All right. No, it's speaking to the Israelites scattered, leading to a much debate among commentators. So what we're going to find out is that among this debate, John Calvin had his opinion and we're going to read it. It says in first Peter's one and 18, Peter's writes to how his readers have been redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your fathers. All right. And who's the fathers, the Israelites? Would Peter really have referred to the Jewish faith he grew up with as an empty way of life? No, he's talking about being justified by the law. Okay, when you get the book of Peter's 1 and 18, let's read that. Because you had those of the circumcision who wanted to push that the only way to be justified was by being perfect according to that first covenant, which we already broke it. Okay, 1 Peter's 1 and 18 Let's read it in NLT. It says, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. Also, breaking the laws. Our forefathers constantly broke the law, constantly broke the covenant. So to be redeemed back, Yahweh Shai's blood covers us. All right. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. Yahweh Shai didn't buy us back with gold or silver. But what? Through his blood. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Yahweh Shai. So the empty way of life, all right, it could be looked at as what? The sin, constantly breaking the laws. And we're redeemed through the blood of Yahweh Shai, covered, okay? Covered, the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, all right? He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Let's get that, all right? Let's get that. That's in the book of Galatians 3 and 13. Hamashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Now, 
Who was under the curse of the law? The Israelites. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 27. All right, this is to the Israel, Israelites. Deuteronomy 27 and 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Because it was the Israelites in the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter, who agreed to the terms of that covenant. Okay? Exodus 24 and 7, and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people, and they said, All that Yahweh have said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord have made with you. So when you read what happened, Israel broke that. So what did that lead to? A curse. All right. For what? Breaking those laws. Yahweh Shai redeemed the Israelites from the curse of the law. Only Israel were under that first covenant of law. Let's go back. All right. So this dude don't even know what he's talking about. It said he implies, it says, and in four and three, he implies that his readers used to practice unrestrained behavior, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, which are all what? Against that first covenant. Sin. Let's get that. First Peter's four and three. See what he what he's talking about. All right, because the heathens were never under the law. So why would these things be, be looked at as breaking that covenant to them? Let's see here. He said first Peter's four and three. All right. Let's start at one for as much then as Hamashiach has suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he have suffered in the flesh and cease. He that had suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. Okay? That he, all right, no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh of the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time pass of our life, many may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess wine, revelance, banquetings, and abominable adulteries, which are all sins against the law. This is what we were doing. This is what we, even here in America, weren't we doing this? All right. We were among the Gentiles learning their works. Psalms 106 In 34, they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works and served their idols, which were a snare unto them. And we've been doing that. So th this 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 verse, he's talking about the Israelites who were repentant coming back to the heavenly father through the teaching of Yahweh. OK. NLT, you have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting of drunkenness and wild parties and their terrible worship of idols. All right. And remember, first Corinthians uh, uh, 12 and two, ye were Gentiles. Ephesians two, ye were called uncircumcision by that which is the circumcision. So. Here we go. Let's get to Calvin point. Dun, 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 dun. Scholars have long been divided over the question of first Peter's intended audience. But it seems the majority of classical interpreters took the phrase exiles dispersed abroad at face value. You should. That's who he was writing to. Seeing the Jews audience to be in view. John Calvin a good representative when he writes in his commentary on first Peter. Let's read John Calvin's, which 
Vocab Malone is a Calvinist. He's a Calvinism. All right. Let's read what he said about first Peters. They who think that all the godly are thus called because they are strangers in the world and are advancing towards the celestial country, which is heavenly Jerusalem. Are much mistaken. See, you all are much mistaken to think that this is speaking to everybody in the world. And this mistake is evident from the word dispersion, which immediately follows. For this can apply only to the Jews. Uh-oh. This is Calvin speaking. All right. Now, if you got a problem with it, take it up with Derek. All right. Your fellow buddy in Jesus. He's the one who found this research. All right. And now look, in modern times, <laughs> though the, the, the consensus has shifted. See, in modern Christianity, it shifted. To fit what? This universal garbage doctrine. Today, most scholars understand first Peter to have been written to the Gentile Christians. Yes. Israelites who were in a Gentile state of mind, turning back to the heavenly father through the preaching of Yahweh Shai being justified under his blood and not under that first covenant because the first covenant cuts us off as a nation, but we broke it. So Yahweh Shai redeemed us from the curses that came with breaking those laws. The mercies of David and the blessing through the faith of Abraham is what we're under, man. Grace. Okay, that's what the mercies of David are all about. Blessed is the man on whom the Lord does not all right, impart sin. And whose sins are covered and blotted out. See, that's what we want to be under. Because under the first covenant, you were justified by keeping those laws perfectly. You see? Under grace, you're justified under the blood of Yahweh Shai, and your, your faith is what justifies you. Now, your faith is going to lead to you keeping the laws to the best of your ability. All right? But you're not justified by that. That's what links these Gentiles to Abraham. Because don't get it twisted. Abraham belonged to a particular lineage. From Adam, through Seth, through Shem, who was Noah's son, through Arphaxad. That's the story of the Bible. At the time of Abraham, his father raised him as an idol worshiper. He was uncircumcised, but restored through the spirit of to his legacy and the understanding of his duties and he kept the laws once he understood that called on the name of the lord and eventually got circumcised but he was blessed all right and everything that 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 proved his faith was done while he was uncircumcised that's what links the uncircumcision gentile israelites who were scattered to abraham when it's talking about the faith of abraham is still Speaking of the seed that are accounted with that promise through Isaac and Jacob, because they will be scattered. There will be a large multitude. That's all scripture. OK. So let's read this again. In modern times, though the consensus has shifted today, most scholars let me calm down. I'm supposed to pause at a period. Right. All right. In modern times, though the census has shifted. Today, most scholars understand First Peter's to have been written to Gentile Christians, all right, which they just get messed up over the term Gentile. They do so primarily because of verses like 1 and 18, which that can't justify that, and 4 and 3, and that can't justify that. Because who was sinning? For those Israelites to have been called sinners for doing those abominable things, all right. They have to have been Israelites. The heathen weren't under that covenant. OK, it says, but also because they're the regions Peter addressed were largely Gentile territory. Right. Because the Israelites were scattered among them. All right. Let's read a little bit more. Why does it matter whether first Peter was written primarily to the Jews or Gentile followers of a Mashiach? All right. Well, you had Jews circumcision who followed Yahweh Shai, thus the 12. Those were Israelites raised in the customs. John the Baptist, 
who preached of Yahweh Shai, all right, to be the new high priest, he was of the circumcision. His parents uh, uh, were, were keeping the laws. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Yahweh Shai was circumcised on the eighth day. Then you had the Gentile, all right, those who weren't raised to be circumcised on the eighth day and didn't have parents who primarily followed the laws and, and, and taught them their heritage and everything. But all are one, all right, all are one through Yahweh Shai, both those who were raised in the customs, the natural branches and the uncultivated wild olive tree are grafted back in under Yahweh Shai. All are one. Contrary to that first covenant being justified by the law, we are now justified through Yahweh Shai. And this was a big point of contention amongst the Israelites. All right. It says, what difference does it make for interpretation? It says, it turns out that if we take first Peter as addressing a Gentile audience, actual heathen, then the epistle becomes one of the uh, one of the strongest supports for the theological idea that the church has been replaced. All right, that the church has replaced Israel as the people of God. And see, this is what vocab Malone and them teach. They want to teach that the church. All right, which that word should really be the congregation. See, they've taken this word church and replaced congregation because the congregation has always been associated with the Israelites. The gathering of the Israelites. See, but see, they were able to take this term church, which ecclesia just means to call out. This word is being called out to the Israelites, but they're able to take this church word and then what? Say that Israel has been replaced by the heathen, which is a goddamn lie. Okay, according to prophecy, the seed of Israel would always be here in the planet Earth. And that seed, a remnant of that seed, would return to the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shah in the latter days. All right, see, listen to this. <laughs> see, let's listen to this. If First Peter was addressing heathen audience, actual heathen, then the epistle becomes one of the strongest supports for the theological idea that the church has been replaced or the church has replaced Israel as the people of God. This concept is also referred to as replacement theology. Supersessionism. You see that? Uh-oh. This is what vocab alone is teaching. Which this ideology goes against even the people who currently call themselves the chosen people in the land. Because they are there based upon the premise that they are the rightful heirs to the promise. That's why they're in the land. That's why they've been taking it. You see that? By the sword. See? See? That see, so so your ideology vocab goes against the people who are actually there, but for some reason you don't talk about them. Here it is: we're just saying we're the Israelites. They go over there and by force take the land and say we're the Israelites, we're the Jews. Well, what, what where's where's the other tribes? Because when the Israelites return to that land, it's going to be all twelve tribes. All right. So this is the basis. This is why Volcam Malone is going so hard in this because he is trying to replace the Israelites, which, according to prophecy, <laughs> can't be done. <laughs> All right. That covenant, those promises are to that seed. Even before we broke the law, that promise was to that seed. And that's what Paul was trying to tell these Galatians. The promise was before the law was written on stone at the time of Moses. When we broke that first covenant. So just because we broke that first covenant doesn't mean now we're replaced with, 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 with all of these heathen nations. As a matter of fact, my favorite scripture to cut that. The beloved elder brother, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33 and 24. Consider as thou not what this people have spoken, saying the two families. All right. Judah and Israel, northern and southern kingdom. Judah and Ephraim. All right. Sometimes when you see Ephraim, it's, it's symbolic of those of the the uh, northern kingdom. OK. It says the two families which the Lord have chosen, he have even cast them off. This is what these niggas are saying. 
Thus they have despised my people that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus said the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rules over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. So if we don't see the sun and the moon, then we know Israel is cast off and that Yahweh Shai ain't coming to set up the throne of David. But we clearly see, I'm looking outside now, the sun is out, the moon's been out. So that means what, according to the Bible? The actual seed of Israel are here in the earth. Word to the mother, and that's here in Jeremiah 31. Okay? Jeremiah 31 and 35, thus saith Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon for the, and the stars of the light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. So the seed of Israel are here. How will we know who they are? Based on prophecy. See, and what we're doing fulfills prophecy. So what do they want to do according to Psalms 83? They want to cut us off from being a nation. They want to cut off our blessing and replace us and put themselves as Edomite Christians which they don't give a damn about really nobody else. And you niggas helping them, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And if they had the power again as they had in times past, they put your ass right in slavery. You dummies. Going back to this article. So John Calvin believes with the Israelites. How about that? John Calvin agrees with the Israelites. This can only apply to the Jews ultimately who are scattered among these nations because again jew can be short for judah which is the son of jacob through whom uh uh came uh, uh Ferez, all right which the, the royal lineage of david came through which eventually solomon and yahweh shai came through right or it can be symbolic of the three tribes which in the time of the babylonian captivity we were just simply called jews which stood for Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, who remained in Jerusalem and even went to rebuild the temple primarily. So, <laughs> finishing this up, in 1 Peter 2 and 9, the readers are said to be a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people for his possession. And that's in 1 Peter 2 and 9. Let's get that. First Peter's two and nine, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Who's the priest? Who's the priesthood in the scriptures? Israelites. But see, the first priesthood was after the order of Aaron. That was how we were redeemed back to the father through the, the, the offering of sacrifices, the day of atonement and so forth. But through now it's through Yahweh Shai. This is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Well, we're going to be upgraded in the new covenant. It's not going to be written on stone this time. It's going to be written in us. All right. That's why we are called lively stones. All right. But it says, but ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay which in times past were not a people. Why were in times past these Israelites not a people? Because they were cut off according to that first covenant. If you broke particular laws, you are cut off from being a people. If you broke the law, all right, of the Sabbath, you were cut off. If you didn't celebrate the Passover, you were cut off. So they were not a people based upon the consequences of breaking that first covenant. But now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, which links us to the book of Hosea. That whole chapter of Hosea breaks down what Peter is talking about. Okay. 
there was a point where we were what? Lo a me, not the people of the Most High. La a imya. La a not imya people, not my people, right? That's in Hosea 1 and 9. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Was not that promise to Abraham? Your seed shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in that place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. See, we were not his people because of our sins. Now we are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together the actual seed and appoint themselves one head and they shall come up out of the land for great shall be the day of Jezreel, the seed of the power. See that? And that's equated with Judah and Israel, northern and southern kingdom. OK, so in times past, we were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims to abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your soul. And aren't we strangers and pilgrims here in Babylon the Great? These Israelites at this time were strangers and pilgrims amongst the Roman Empire and the provinces which were conquered by them. And he's telling them, abstain from these lusts which war against your soul. So this is speaking to the Israelites, man. Okay? The lively stones, man. The spiritual priesthood, which only applies to the Israelites. Okay? All of these letters were written to Israelites. Even the book of Galatians, Galatians 1 and 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yahweh Shai and by the father who raised, who he raised from the dead to all the brethren, which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. OK, grace be unto you from God, the father and from our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who gave himself for our sins, who sinned. Under that first covenant, who needed to be redeemed for sinning under that first covenant? Israelites. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. So the brethren, who are the brethren according to the, the book of Romans? Okay? The book of Romans 9 and 3. For I myself, which I was accursed from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants, the giving of the law and the services of God and the promise. So you, you Christians, you, you, you losers out there, all y'all got going for yourselves <laughs> is the fact that Israelites were called heathen and Gentiles, and now that they're justified under the blood of Yahweh, but you don't understand. And see, the time is it's over. The true believers are, have awakened. And replacement theology is off. Supersessionism is off. Okay? So, let's keep reading. Let's read this again. In 1 Peter 2 and 9, the readers are said to be a chosen race, race Okay, that's what a generation is, a race. Okay, gene. All right. A royal priest to the holy nation, a people for his possession. Phrases pulled right out of Hebrew scripture. The book of Hebrews, is that written to everybody? Is everybody a Hebrew? Right out of Hebrew scriptures as the scriptures of the nation of Israel. If Peter is applying this imagery to Gentile, actual heathen, then, as Scott McKnight claims, there is no passage in the New Testament that is more explicitly associated to the Old Testament terms for Israel with the New Testament church than this one. So, see, now they try to say in the, under the New Testament and under grace and all of that, the church is now everybody and not just Israel. No. But if the original readers of First Peter's were themselves actual Jews or Israelites, then Peter's language is not surprising at all. And it will undercut the use of first Peter as a proof text in support of super uh, uh, sessionism. This garbage vocab Malone believes in it cuts you. That's not to say you couldn't potentially arrive 
at a supersessionist theology, and that's what they do. They go to scriptures that support supersessionists. When we go to Hebrews, the eighth chapter, and it tells you that second covenant is for Israelites only. Okay? It says from other passages, but first Peters two and four through ten is often the most of the one of the most important messages in the debate, so it's worth considering. All right, and I believe we read that. All right, this is speaking of Israelites. The Israelites were not a people. Because according to that first covenant, your sins cut you off from being a people. As a matter of fact, let's get an example. Let's just type in cut off. This is one example, Genesis 17 and 14. And an uncircumcised man, child whose flesh is of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. See? So this, if you're not circumcised, that's one of the terms under that first covenant, which this was just a covenant given to Abraham and his household. All right? But according to it, if you're not, you're cut off. All right. And we know Ishmael was not the child of the promise when you read that chapter. So don't even go there. Let's see here. Right. If you eat leavened bread during the Passover, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. All right. Keep the Sabbath holy. All right. If you defile the Sabbath, you should be put to death. All right. If you do any work on the Sabbath, your soul should be cut off from among your people. Now, under Yahweh blood, you're covered. Because we're working on the Sabbath. You do work on the Sabbath. All of us at some point we work on the Sabbath, right? Yahweh redeemed us from the curse of that law. You see? There was the Israelites that needed to be redeemed because we were the ones cut off. Okay, if you eat it uh, here, your soul was cut off. If you're unclean eating the sacrifice, there's so many things we do that technically cut us off, which is why those of the circumcision were looking at these Gentile Israelites as common or unclean. All right, but Peter... In Acts, the 10th chapter was given instruction. All right. Acts 10 and 28. And he said unto them, "Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew. All right. Raised in the customs to keep company or to come to one of another nation. And when you look up this word, another alos phylos nation. All right. Speaking of Israelites and the Jews looked at these Israelites as not even of the nation of Israel. They looked at these Israelites as heathen or no people. But God have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And you have this dummy K-Dub who's down with vocab saying that the foods and unclean things Peter was talking about was actual food. And the Lord told him to eat the food, the unclean things. No, the unclean things were speaking of Israelites who are in the idol worship and wickedness, unclean, abominable beasts. But the Lord showed Peter that he should call not any man common or unclean. The word common is koinos. And what does it mean? Dun, da, da, da. Ordinary genera generality. See, the Jews looked at themselves as, you know, the fact that our fathers and mothers kept the customs and traditions. We're, we're privileged above you. You can't have any good graces with the Most High. Unhallowed, unholy, profane, Levitically unclean. That's how the Israelite foreigners were being looked at as a no people, cut off. All right? So anyway, this guy comes to this conclusion. He said, that said, here are four reasons why I believe against the current consensus. He, he's against you vocab, all right, that first Peter was originally written to Jews, all right, followers of Yahweh Shai. 
and that's what the church was. It was compromise. It was comprised of Jews, those who believed and were raised in the customs, but they believed on Yahawashai, or you weren't raised in the customs, and through the preaching you were brought back in. That's the church. That's why the scripture says there is neither Jew nor Greek. Why is it just Jew nor Greek? Why? What about Ham? Jew nor Ham? Jew nor Moab? No, Jew nor Greek because the Israelites, when you go into the Greek captivity, which you have to have the Apocrypha, what happened to them? They became uncircumcised. They became Hellenized. And from generation to generation, they were raising their children as heathen. All right? Same thing with us here, man, but we're brought back just as Abraham, all right, was in Ur of the Chaldees, which is a physical Babylon. Every Abraham restored all things to that chosen lineage. Now we have access back to that land through a covenant and promise given unto him, which that land was where Adam and the sons of God were kicked out of. <laughs> all right. We were kicked out of it again after Solomon's sin. <laughs> Eventually. All right. You know, we were there, but eventually, you know, the, the, the Lord you know, kept a remnant, you know, but eventually in 70 AD, that temple was sacked and we were kicked out all over again. So here's the four lines of evidence that point towards the fact that Peter was speaking to the Jews, the Israelites scattered. All right. We, we all right, verse one and one supports the Judas uh, 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 audience of Israelites only and the israelites come out of jacob all right jacob's name was changed to israel judah is one of those tribes first two his second reason peter's critique of their former way of life all right actually quite well applies to hellenistic jews in the roman empire <laughs> and we just read about hellenistic Jews, which you have to go to the book of Maccabees to understand the Hellenistic Jews. See, he's putting it all together. What's wrong with vocab? See, once they come to this understanding, then they become the chosen people because they, you can't get around it. First Maccabees 1, what happened to the Israelites at the time of the Greek Empire? Wicked men came out of Israel and did what? made a covenant with the heathen that were round about. Okay? And what did they do? They built a place of exercise, verse 14, at, at Jerusalem, polluting the Holy Land, polluting the holy ways, according to the customs of the heathen, and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. This is what happened with the Israelites. That's the Hellenization. This, this story. Now, there was a remnant who stuck to the traditions all right, the Maccabees, which ultimately the Hasmonean dynasty and so forth is where the circumcision would eventually come out. This is why you had particular sects of Jews who stuck to the tradition, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes. OK, and so forth. These were Israelites who stuck to the traditions, but there were also a bunch of Israelites scattered who were raised as heathens. And through the blood of Yahawashai, they are brought back. G. So he himself understands that Peter is writing to Hellenistic Jews in this uh, 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 chapter who were under Hellenization. Can you hear me? His third, and you can read, you know, I put this in post-production. And we can read, you know, we, we read the th his third reason for saying Peter is speaking to Israelites. Peter's use of Old Testament prophetic imagery points to a Jew Jewish audience, to the Jews. All right, because we're not pertaining. We're the actual Jews being raised up. How about that? So prophecy that he uses points to Hosea. Just like Paul uses Hosea in Romans 9 and various other chapters, letting you know that it's only talking to Israelites. OK, want an example? Romans 9. In 23, and he might that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he have afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he have called, not of the Jews only, 
All right, and let's look up this term Jew so you can understand what, what it means by Jew. All right, you were raised in the customs, man. Ayudas is Judas, Yahawada. All right, belonging to the Jewish nation, Jewish as respects of birth, origin, or religion, meaning they were raised in the customs. That's why they were called the natural branches. But then you had the wild branches, the wild olive tree who were not cultivated and raised in the customs, which is why they were called Gentiles, which we have a lesson going into the etymology of the word Gentile and how originally it only applied to a particular race. All right. It's on this page. It says, as he also said in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. So the Gentiles were, were once not his people, but now are the people. What made you the people of the most high under that first covenant? Keeping those laws. OK. But under grace, you're justified contrary to keeping those laws now faith you're going to keep the laws but you're justified by faith under this all right and to enter into the new covenant and we're not under the new covenant if we were under the new covenant you wouldn't need to be teaching anyone that's an israelite anyway as he said in hosea i will call them my people which were not my people the gentiles are linked to who was written about in the book of hosea and heard my beloved which was not my beloved and it shall come to pass that in the place it was said unto them you are not my people as Peter said, which were not a people, there shall you be called the children of the living God. Okay. So that, that Paul, that was Paul. For his fourth reasoning is Peter expli explicitly distinguishes his readers from the Gentiles. All right. And I believe we already brought out those, those points. And the, the, the term for Gentile, you know, is originally ethnos. But you have to go into the scriptures and be able to discern when it's talking to about actual heathen. All right. Or Israelites who were called heathen. OK. You can read his reasoning there. But eventually he's going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, okay, he, he, he comes to the understanding is written to the actual Jews, but. You know, we're all one. He, of course, it's going to come to that, you know. Uh, bottom line, since Peter 1 was most likely written to ethnic Jews, it shouldn't be pressed into service as a linchpin in the arguments to support supersessionism. The conversation is much more complex than that. In the past, consider uh, theology and the church, but whatever, uh, whatever we adopt, we. All right. It says whatever, but whatever theological system we adopt, we need to make sure we we're reading first Peter. With the grain of its uh, context to the Jews rather than against it. And he goes to give you the notes. OK, so we have the notes to where this came from. John Calvin's commentary on Catholic epistles. Okay, so if you want that understanding, this is John Calvin's words. We have, you know, it, it, it written. All right. Yep, Calvin wrote this, so... I'm going to put this in the description box if you brothers want to go in on it as well. The water to the uh, beloved elder brother require quam. Um, we're all up and coming elders. We've been in this thing. We're not, you know, the you have the, uh, the apostles, you have the bishops and the, the elders. And we came up and entered into their, you know, uh, uh, you know, their works through the spirit and power. Of Yahabashim so we're, we're not on the same level as them, but through the spirit. You know, the Lord is raising brothers up, man. So the water to that brother for this. I um, mean, that's it. You know, Psalm 78 and 5, for he established a testimony in Jacob and he appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known unto their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, 
whom should raise and declare them unto their children. And that's what happened in the, in the, in the New Testament. All right. But the thing is, the children that were born were born into a heathen like state. So through Yahweh Shai, they had to be covered. And that's the mercies of David and the blessing of Abraham, you know, being uncircumcised yet justified. So I'm going to leave it there. I mean, there's so much more we could have went into. All right. All of these letters are written to Israelites. Even this letter in Romans, Romans, the first chapter. OK. Verse 7, 1 and 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace and peace unto you. All right. So when you read all of these letters, see what Ephesians say. All right. Paul, an apostle to Yahweh of Yahweh Shah Mashiach by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. These are Israelites. All of these letters are written to Israelites, man. <laughs> these videos we're doing are to the Israelites. All right. Shalom. Hopefully I'll edify. It.